This video is going to be talking about the different types of special occasion speeches we might come across. Now, we're going to talk about special occasion speeches because at some point in our lives we're all going to be asked to give some type of a special occasion speech. So it's really important that we know how to do this. And generally, this is the type of speech that most people have um, the most encounters with in their lifetimes. We're not technically going, we're not going to most of the time give a formal informative speech or a formal persuasive speech, but those concepts that we've learned through formal informative and persuasive speeches are going to be important in special occasion speeches. Things like having an introduction, having a conclusion, organizing the body of our speeches, that kind of thing, all that's going to transfer over into our special occasion speeches. In this video I'm going to be talking about four different types of uh, special occasion speeches. There are more types that we might be giving, and in this class we're going to be giving a different type. However, these are going to be the basics that you want to consider as you're thinking about special occasion speeches. And as you're considering different types of special occasion speeches that aren't on this list, for instance, giving a, a wedding type of speech, you might con contemplate talking about different aspects of things, like you might use concepts from the tribute speech, you might use concepts from the speech of introduction, um, all those types of things. This is kind of a good start for us as we're considering what we need to include in our speeches. First off, let's talk about a speech of introduction. A speech of introduction is basically going to be a speech where either you or an organization have brought in another speaker and they're going to be making a presentation. What your job is, is to introduce this next speaker. And there's some things you need to do. First off, and this seems pretty obvious, but you want to focus on the person being introduced. And that makes sense, right? We want to focus on the person who's going to be talking. However, you'd be surprised how many people don't actually focus on that person during a speech of introduction. Second thing you want to do, you want to make sure you're being brief. Honestly, this speech isn't about you. This speech is about them. And the people came to see that second person talk, not to see you talk. So don't get all 20 minutes of introduction on us. We don't want that. Keep it to five minutes or less. In your speech of introduction, you want to make sure you're establishing that speaker's credibility. So don't tell the story about how the first time you met him, you went out drinking and ended up shooting some fish. That's not what you want to do. All right, you want to focus on making sure that the audience members believe that they know what they're talking, that the speaker knows what they're talking about. In addition to that, you want to create realistic expectations for this speaker. So as this person is getting up there to speak, don't say that they are the end-all, be-all expert of junkyards in Rome, Georgia, because, or if that's not the case, because your audience members might be expecting them to have a certain amount of knowledge then about that topic that they aren't actually equipped to talk about. So, something to think about there. I want to get realistic expectations for what the speaker is actually going to talk about and their knowledge level. Finally, you want to establish the tone of the presentation, and you want to match the tone of the presentation that, uh, that the speaker is going to be having. So if the speaker is going to be talking about something that's very lighthearted, very fun, and that type of thing, you don't want to come out and give a very somber, very um, sad type of introduction. Right? That doesn't make any sense for us. If the speaker is going to have more of a somber, uh, solemn type of speech, you don't want to come out and be this bundle of energy because that's not going to make sense. If you come out and say, we're really excited to welcome this person and they're such a great person and they're great, blah, 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 blah. So here's Johnny. And then the speaker comes out and starts talking about dead kittens. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't mesh up. So that's some things to think about with a speech of introduction. When you're giving a speech to present an award to somebody, it's exactly what it sounds like. You've been chosen to introduce an award winner or somebody who's being recognized for something. And this is something we may experience at various times throughout our lives. The first thing again that I would suggest with this is to be brief. We are not the people that the audience members care about. They care about the award winner. So don't talk a whole lot. Again, you want to keep this somewhere between two and five minutes. You want to state the purpose of the award. Why was this award created? And that may take a little while or it may not. It depends on how the award is, how popular the award is, um, what the name of the award is, that kind of thing. If the award is the Nobel Peace Prize, we kind of know what that's about. If it's the James P. Morgan Award, 
we might not know what that award is actually trying to um, recognize, so we need to make sure we tell the audience members why this award was created and what it's supposed to be recognizing. The next thing we want to think about is the fo to focus on the achievements of the, that person that's being awarded. So don't talk about why you're awesome. Don't talk about um, these other stories about this other person. You know, again, don't talk about going fishing and shooting a bunch of fish, um, getting drunk, that type of thing. That's not what we want to focus on. We want to focus on why this person is being given this award and why this award should be given to this person. Also, think about if the audience already knows this winner or not. If they don't know who the winner is, and you tell them in the first line who the winner is, that removes all that great suspense. If the audience doesn't know who the winner is, start out with phrases like, this person has really worked hard this year, they really ex uh, excelled, um, this is something that they did, this is a project they worked on, and start filling in just these little gaps until the audience finally can figure out, oh, she's talking about jury, whatever it is. Okay. The last thing, remember to make sure you thank the nominating group. Nominating groups do not get thanked very often for what they do, and you want to make sure that they get credit for it. All right, so let's flip, these, let's flip that same coin then and talk about how do we accept an award. I said earlier that uh, when you're presenting an award, it's not about you, it's about the person receiving the award, and that's true. However, the person ex receiving the award, if you talk for 15 minutes about accepting that award, you're going to lose your audience. There was once an award ceremony I went to where each award winner talked for at least 15 to 20 minutes. I wanted to shoot myself by the end of the award ceremony. It was so boring. No one is interesting enough to talk about themselves for 20 minutes. It feels good to talk about yourself for 20 minutes, but nobody else cares. So be brief. Things to focus on in your brief acceptance of the award. Thank those who are giving the award to you. Obviously, you wouldn't be receiving it if they weren't recognizing you, so that's one of the ways that you can be a very humble person accepting that award. Compliment the competition. There are other people out there that are awesome, and they deserve just a little bit of compliment too. It might have been a very close race, it might not have been a very close race. But again, this is ways that you can show that you are humbly accepting this award and you appreciate this uh, recognition that you're being given. Also, thanks though, thank, give thanks to those who helped you get the award. Very few things we do in life we've actually done by ourselves, right? This isn't saying you need to thank your mom, your dog, your nephew, your niece, and everybody else like you're receiving an Academy Award, but you do want to thank those who helped you with the projects that you were on or helped you with whatever it was that gave you the edge to winning this award. And then finally, accept the award graciously. Nobody likes it when somebody gets up there and says, yep, I'm awesome, and it's about time that you recognized how awesome I am, right? You can do that in jest, but don't do that as a serious thing because you'll just kind of come off as a jerk, and that's not what we want to do. The last type of speech, and this one can be really tricky, is a tribute or eulogy speech, and these are a little bit different. A tribute speech might be something we would give to people who are alive. So this might be some of the things you'd think about if you were going to give a wedding speech. You're giving a tribute to the couple. Um, a, a eulogy speech is going to be a speech about someone who has passed away or a group of people that has passed away. All right. So that's the difference between like a tribute and a eulogy speech. Again, make sure we are being brief with these. Um, a tribute or eulogy speech can be a little bit longer. You can get away with having maybe a, a 10 to possibly up to 15 minute tribute or eulogy. But beyond that, people aren't going to care. All right. So make sure that you're being very brief and succinct with what you're trying to say. You want to make sure that you're speaking on noble themes with a tribute or eulogy speech. So choose something that you're going to talk about that's going to say, yes, this person was a fantastic person. I'm going to give an example here. I went to a funeral uh, not too long ago, I think a couple of, a couple of springs ago, for my, uh, my husband's, for my partner's uh, grandmother. And she had passed away. And the person who was giving her eulogy, the religious figure giving her eulogy, decided to talk about, as the, the main part of his, the eulogy he was giving, um, he focused on how she was really good at garage sailing and getting good deals. Not the most noble theme, because if you think about what that means, it could kind of come off like she was a cheapskate. 
That's not what you want to do with the eulogy. You don't want to paint a picture of this person who has died or this person who you're honoring that makes them look bad. So you want to choose some kind of a noble theme. This person was very loving. This person was a very giving friend. This person knew so many things and was always willing to share this great advice. Whatever it might be, choose some type of a noble theme that will create a memorable image of the person that's being honored. You don't want to come off of a eulogy or a tribute and have your audience members saying, wow, that was offensive. After you've chosen that noble theme, you want to illustrate that theme with vivid examples. So if you say this person was a very loving person, then you need to say, for example, at Christmas time last year, I didn't have any money to be able to buy Christmas presents for my kids. And my, this, this person knew that, and on Christmas morning there was all these Christmas presents under the tree, and there was no explanation, and they didn't even ask for a thanks. I knew it was them because of the handwriting, but blah, 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 whatever it is. So you need to tell those types of vivid stories to help illustrate why this person embodied that noble theme. Also, you want to express the feelings of the audience. If your audience members are all crying and are sad, it's okay to have kind of more of a down or we're going to miss this person type of experience. If your audience members are all sad and crying and you come out there and you're telling jokes and you're being crude and that type of thing, it's not matching what they're expecting and it's not going to come off as well. It's not going to be accepted well from your audience members. And finally, make sure you're being genuine. If you're giving a tribute or a eulogy speech and you sound bored or you sound like you don't know this person or you sound like you don't like this person, those aren't going to be good things to try and reach your audience members. So think about that. Think about before you accept an offer to give a tribute or a eulogy speech, is this someone that I can genuinely say nice things about, that I can speak on noble themes about, that I can illustrate that themes, those themes with vivid examples and that type of thing. If you can't, don't accept the invitation to give a tribute or eulogy speech because it's just going to come off poorly. Hopefully, this overview of these different types of speeches will help you as you start to prepare for your special occasion speech.